Hello and welcome. It's Katie Sue TV. I'm Kerry Griffiths and I'm your demonstrator and host today. And guess what? We've had a new arrival. Well, not really a baby, but baby accessories. A fabulous new arrival. Loving them all. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, I do want to thank some of you. I'm already getting comments in. Jean Staples. Hi, Jean. Um, Letitia Jane Terry, hello, Nicola Duxfield, Vanessa Richardson, and I know my friend Jane Creed is watching as well, probably Bev King as well, and Doreen and Noreen, loving it. And remember, we are live, guys, so I can answer questions. I'd love to know where you're from. I'd love to know what you're doing this morning. You've also been shopping already. Some of you lucky people have already got your baby accessories mold on the way. What are you planning on doing it? I want to know. I absolutely want to know. Now, the newest mold looks like this so this is the cover shot for it and those are on cookies so don't forget guys you do have cookie use um cookie you do have cake use as well as home decor pieces and this is the mold itself now if i was to count every single piece on here you've got 17 elements that's a heck of a lot of buck for your dollar i tell you or your pound so lots of elements we'll be looking at that in a moment we were going to be in depth i'll tell you what i'm using how i'm using it and i'm going to be molding some of those pieces out now as i did say we are live i really do want some interaction just so that i know i'm not stood here alone talking to myself and then or not because i oh hi sandra bibby um Vanessa, hello. Oh, Vanessa again. Good morning, Vanessa. You've said hello twice. I'm loving that. Thank you. Uh, during the course of this show, we're going to do a couple of demonstrations. I'm going to do a reasonably large project as well, so I'm excited to do that. So I think, first of all, let's have a little look and go to one of the VTs so we can actually see some of the wonderful samples that are out there. Now, as you can see, we've got the freestanding MDF baby word on the show and that's going to be the main carrier on my um, demonstration to actually put stuff together as I've already mentioned we are cake we are craft we are everything basically and we do recommend that you get two separate molds if you're doing it for cake and one for craft because we don't want any cross contamination for our card makers out there we do have a set of papers and backgrounds on the show we do have some peel offs on there and later on we will actually look at the website, tell you where to find stuff, how to get where you need to go, and everything involved. So I'm looking forward to it. And please, oh gosh, we've got a load. Heather Robinson. Hi, Heather. Caller. Love you, caller. Um, caller. Tisha again. Sandra. Loving it. F fabulous guy. Absolutely loving having the, the comments come through. Please keep it going. And as I said, we'll interact as we go along. So before we get down to the mold, what are we actually using? I'm using in the mold air drying clay. Now, if you've seen me work before, you've seen I'm, I use this a lot. So that's the white version, which is a big 200 pound pack. It also comes in colors. Um, so there are nine colors. Now, the reason I did these part balls on here is because it's very hard without opening the packaging to really appreciate how pigmented this clay is. A little bit goes a real long way. So even though things like this red doesn't look, sorry, wrong way, this red doesn't look really red, when it dries, it's really red. I mean, this dark green down here, where am I? I'm doing this backwards and upside down, a bit like Ginger Rogers, there you go. Um, it's a really deep bluish green, and I would use that for holly and foliage and stuff. So that's what we're working with. I do want to explain a couple of things though. Um, when you first get your packet of clay and you open it, or you open it with the scissors, because I'm gonna struggle otherwise, it's, uh, it's certainly sealed away from the elements. When you first open your clay, it's going to feel a little bit moist and that's because obviously the water content in there i would always recommend flattening it out a little bit putting putting it to one side for a couple of minutes just to let it breathe because a lot of the time if you've got any problem with any mold whatsoever taking air dry clay out it's usually because your clay is too wet so letting it breathe for a few minutes is the key to actually um, making it come out, still capturing all the detail. And then as far as storage goes, because I always get the questions on storage, I put it into a sandwich bag or a plastic bag, and then I put it into um, an airtight box just to keep it fresh. If I'm planning on keeping the clay for a long time, I will actually keep it, maybe put a baby wipe in the same box as moisture in the air. Enough about the clay. Let's go and show what we're doing. So 
I'm not going to mold all of the elements of this because we'll be here for hours, and although you wouldn't mind it, and I wouldn't mind it, I'd like to move on and do other stuff. So I'm going to use pink for most things because I believe that the color pink is going to show up better um, when the camera catches it. Now, I tend to favor using white vegetable fat. This isn't animal fat. In this country, it's usually Trex. In Europe and America, it's usually Crisco. The important thing, it is actually... Um, a vegetable fat and not an animal fat, okay? And I've got the tiniest little bit and I just rub this into the mold. If you've got small areas like these here, you could actually use a really small brush and just put a bit on, but the trick is not too much of it. So let's start with, let's start with one of the baby booties. Now, uh, the baby shoes. Now there is a pair here. So when you look at the finished pair of shoes, there's obviously a right and a left, okay? So be careful. If you're molding these in advance, and you're building up your stash, which is what I do, um, just make sure that you make sure to check that you've got a left and a right. Once it's done and smoothed off, I just flex the mold and out it drops. Let's see if I can hold that one up to camera. So can we get a close up on that one? We can. So there you go. Now, if you look at the shoe, see this bit here? That's how I know that where it's a right or a left, because this is where the buckle comes over. So that's the little shoes. They are absolutely darling. Got to love those. Um, oh, another one. I've got to do this in yellow. I'm sorry. I have to do it in yellow. Duck, ducks don't come in pink. I love the little yellow duck in this. It's such a beautiful element for home decor, for a gift card, anything. It's just beautiful. I mean, how's that saying go? All your ducks in a row? Maybe put three three or four ducks on a card front and actually send it to a friend as a good luck card so once i've got it the secret is give it a good flex you're not going to break a ktc mold and let's just pop that little one out and there you go where are we how how cute is that and then i just paint the beak orange paint its little eye black and as far as painting onto air dry clay um, anything that you can use on paper or card, you can paint or color with with air dry clay because it's a paper based product. Um, if, however, you're using sugar, because I do know we've got cake decorators out there. If you're using this for sugar, you can paint with um, paste food colors. You can mix alcohol with dust food colors and put them on there. There are actually edible marker pens out there. And if you're doing things like eyes and beaks, it's just as easy to touch it with an edible marker. So let's have another look at something else on here. Um, the baby bottle. Now, baby bottle is going to look a little bit peculiar in pink, but it'll show up a lot better than it does with white. We will see these pieces molded and finished and painted up when I come to do the final project, uh, the main demonstration, because I've got all the stuff prepped for that. So again, secret, I fill the mold, I give it a bit of a flex around just to get all of those elements out and it literally drops out. And part of the dropping out, the secret of that is having your clay can I get that in screen? There you go. And you've got all the little markers. I'll pull up a box in a moment of the finished elements so you can see them better. Now, if I move on to other things, I just want to talk through a couple of things on the mold that you may be going, what is that? So we've got the baby push chair or the pram or whatever you wish to call it here. This here is the handle, the handle that you push the pram with, which would sit here. Now, if you wanted to not make this a pram, you wanted it to make it into a Moses basket, this here is the handle, so you could attach the handle on the side and it gives you a Moses basket. Here we've got the wheels. The wheels can be underneath this. Now, there's two wheels on there, so you can mold two at a time. And we've added some other fun elements into this. I think I'd quite like to pull down one or two of the pieces behind me, just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, about the different elements of the pram. And then I'll actually pull the pram through. So let me just grab this one here. OK, I'm going to put this one to our close up camera so you can see it. So where am I working backwards? So there you go. That's that's the pram down, down, up, left, right. Fire. <laughs> there you go. So that's the pram on that one. Now, let's see if I can find one where it's made into um, a Moses basket. I can't find a Moses basket. Oh, I can. OK. A good opportunity to share cookies. OK, these are some cookies that I actually did. So as you can see, I put the handle on the side there and that gives you the Moses basket effect. And there's the bottle we were talking about. And there's the little duck, which I'm absolutely in love with. So. So 
there you go so that's that so i just want to put in i want to show you how easy it is to do the the pram in the middle i also want to explain one or two things about demolding the pram so again a little bit of white vegetable fat now you could take your time and put different colored clays in here i personally have found it's easier just to do it one color and then paint it after with acrylics or paint it afterwards with food colors whichever you want to do so just take my clay and remember the clay has actually had some breathing time so I roll it into a bit of a sausage and I just bend it around the corner I, I don't worry how much I put in because if I haven't got enough I can always add to it if I've got too much as you can see I can just swipe it off with my thumb so mine is sticking to the glass mat slightly but if you do work on a glass mat, if you actually dust your mat with corn flour or put a piece of paper on, you'll find that the mold will slide around easier. It doesn't suction in. So I'm coming in, I'm pressing that down to capture all of the detail underneath. And then the next thing I do is I come up and I really bend the mold away. Now that's the joy of the Katie Sue molds. They're made of food grade, high quality silicone. They're very flexible, you can use them. I like to turn it over. Oh, well, there you go, that one just dropped straight out. So, and the secret to that is the fact that uh, the clay was drier. Oh yes, there you go. So that's how you do it. And then you would add the wheels and the handle and all of the other bits onto it. So, oh, I've got more. Let me just have a quick look at the comments because we like our comments. Let's see where we're up to. We've got Caller, Heather, Carol. Oh, can't say that. Hawkenland from Norway. Hello, Norway. Nice to see you. I went on a cruise to Norway a couple of years ago. Stunning country. Love your scenery. Uh, Lorraine Kelly. Hello, Lorraine. Um, Dan Hughes. Doreen Thompson. Doreen, hi there. Julia Smith, Letitia, uh, me and my husband, sis. oh, Letitia, I'm sorry you've got chest infections at the moment, but you know what, it's good, because you're sat there watching me instead, so, loving that, feel, be feel better soon, um, Anne, ooh, Anne, you've got a name and a half, haven't you, a Ajman Defar, Oh, OK. I'm um, sorry if I've just butchered that name, but I'm um, and you know who you are, right? You've got a question, too. Would you use modeling paste if it was for a cake? Yes, I would. Um, there are products out there you can buy directly off the shelf, um, like Renshaw's Extra is one that comes to mind, and that's internationally available. And you can use that directly out of the package and then using it in the mold. And then it's great for painting and adding to a project. You can use regular sugar paste or rolling fondant. You would need to add something like Tylos or CMC powder to it. Um, Katie Sue on their website on the YouTube channel does have a couple of YouTubes on how to modify paste. But I would say if your paste is really sticky, then you need to find something that you can add to it which is usually a Tylos powder or a CMC powder which are readily available on the internet and in most cake stores and other big chains have got stuff as well but there are lots of modeling pastes out there as well that you can buy directly off the shelf in multitudes of colors and they will work perfectly well I would say you can use either um, white vegetable fat with it or you can dust your mold with a bit of cornstarch or corn flour tap it out well and that will help it release as well so really loving that uh, let's see what else we do um really want you to continue leaving me comments let's see where are we up to um i think i'd like to show you some of the samples that we've got in a video to be honest with the design team has been doing an absolutely fabulous job um keep your comments in because i am seeing them for this time they're coming up scrolling up there and loving that and i'd like to take a look and see what we've got on offer for you right yes loving that Demonstration one now, I believe. OK, we're going into demonstration two. Do you know, that's the trouble with live TV. They try and tell me everything I'm doing. And do I pay attention? I do. And then it completely goes out of my mind. You know what? I think I'm, I think we 
I think I'm getting old. I really think I'm getting old. So, right, let's move on and show you some stuff to do. Now, on, on the show, we have an MDF freestanding word kit, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it comes out of the packaging and how you would use it. So, first of all, you have the base piece, and this obviously has all of the apertures ready to push the MDE. MDF in. You also have the words, let's turn the right way up, Griffiths, the word baby, or if your name is Abby, there you go, your name's Abby, but um, the word baby. And what we've done is we've laser engraved the letters so that when you use them, you'll know exactly where the positioning of the letters is for you to put them on. Now, what I would say is don't forget, if you turn this over, you've got a nice back to them as well. You don't have to put the letters on there. It could just be something as a home decor piece within your finished piece. Now, I want to show you the back of the bit that I'm actually going to demonstrate for you because we did something a little clever on this. It wasn't my idea. It was Sue's idea, but a really good one. So this is the piece that we're going to we go to the overhead. There you go. This is the piece I'm going to be decorating up and I'm going to show you how I paint this. However, we thought, you know, there's good real estate on the back. So we actually turned it into the journey of the child. So that was the 12 week scan. That was the date on which the little one was born. That's proud, da proud daddy. Could be two proud daddies. Could be proud mummy and two proud mummies. And then the newest addition to the family tree. I thought that was a really cute way of immortalizing something that was the baby plaque. So let's put this to one side. So now let me move this out of the way because I want to do a bit of painting while I've got you here because it's important to me that we talk about every single step of the process. Now. To get to something that is white, if you don't want the MDF color, you need to do a few things. Now, these tabs here have been machined so they fit perfectly into the slots within the baseboard. If you're going to paint them, you can't paint over those tabs because if you thicken them up with layers of paint, what will happen is they'll no longer fit into the slots. So I tend to use stuff like masking tape or washi tape, anything like that. I'm just going to line that across the bottom and line that across the bottom there. And I just wrap that around. So when they do the painting process, um, I'm not getting paint onto that area. Also, there's another added benefit to that. It gives me some way of holding it when the thing is wet. So let's pull in a bit of a sheet that I can use for, where are we going? For cleanup. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I paint them and the reasons why I paint them. So it's that way on. OK, so I'm using just regular acrylic paint, um, acrylic paint from a shop, inexpensive shop, expensive shop, whichever you're choosing to use. I'm just going to put a little bit on my palette here just because this isn't going to be a huge dem. I just wanted to do a couple of minutes just to show you the process I go through. Now, where have I put them? Um, I then take a bit of sponge. Now, this could just be a baby sponge or something from an inexpensive store, and I've cut it into small pieces, and I found I get best results just by sponging the color on. Now, once you put the color on, you'll see that the lasering still shows through, which is good if you want to position your letters. Now, because... MDF is actually porous, the first layer will only make it look this color. Now, it may not pick up that well, but that's not white, white. So I tend to give two, let's get the right one. I give two coats. So if I put that over there, you can see how much whiter this is than that. So this is two coats. So I would do it once, one coat, let it dry, put another one on top. And then we come in, we put the color. Now, the reason I like to put the color on here, um, on white on before the color, is it really does add to the vibrancy. So if I just put a bit of pink on there, because the project we're working with is pink. And I come in, I'll use the same sponge, but you will see immediately it really comes to life with the color and it gives a really nice pop of vibrancy about it. I don't mind the slight texture that you get from sponging. I found that really interesting in the background. So it's just a personal preference. You can brush if you've got aerosol cans that you can spray. If you've got an airbrush, anything you wish to do, that's what I would use. I'm using um, acrylic paints. I haven't used anything else. Um, you could use a colored gesso if that's something you have in your area to use. So let me just clear the decks because I want to get on and show you the rest of the build. Yep, Kerry just disappeared under the desk. So 
this is what this is what we're looking at now when it comes to slotting the squares into the apertures below let's go back to this one so once it's all painted up i usually stick this on with a bit of it can be a pva glue it can be a gel glue it could probably even be a super glue if you wish anything that's going to hold wood to wood or paper to paper will be fine so i'd glue that in place now if you find when you're sponging you've got a bit of fringing of paint around the edge there are a couple of options you could go with a small paintbrush paint around the edge if you're someone that has something like um paint pens like posca pens you could draw around the edge you could even get a sharpie and actually do a sharpie around the edge that will clean that up for you now when this goes into these slots in the bottom here they will fit in perfectly if however they're painted and you haven't actually covered those up you're going to struggle getting that in but it'll fit perfectly well i normally put a few dots of glue there push it into place and then it's stable just let it sit to totally dry and it'll be good to go so that's that's where we've got to let's take this bit here because i need it that's where i've got to do manufacture this now this in itself is a really beautiful piece if you didn't want to go any further than this you could so this is the version in pink let me just show you so say you've got a really contemporary looking nursery this is exactly what I'd be putting there. Now, granted, it's blue because I like the color blue, but this actually stood on a bookshelf or something in the baby's room would be lovely as well. So just know that you can go pastel, you can go contemporary, you can go modern, you can go bold, you can go vintage, whatever you wish. So I'm just laying this here, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. Now, you have to forgive me if I don't get this bit perfect because obviously I'm trying to work upside down at this point and over the top of the lip of this. Oops. And at the end of this dem, I've got a little for fun bit of information I want to get back from you. So before I do that, let me just have a quick look at who I've got here. Kath, Kath, you love the mold. I love the mold too. That's Kath Savory. Uh, Joanne Johnson, good morning, Doreen. Yes, the samples are fabulous. And thank you, design team. You did a great job, as always. Um, Rebecca Davis. Rebecca, what a lovely idea. It is, isn't it? I, I like those little touches you can do. I mean, a mould is as useful as your imagination can make it. And I love the fact that the versatility of the moulds can be everything from cake to cookie to card to scrapbooking to home decor. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about using the air dry clay. It's lightweight. So if it does need to be mailed, it's not adding weight to your packaging. And also the clay is really resilient and it's a good carrier for things like dyes and paints and glazes. Love it. You can even use a marker on air dry clay. I love that sort of thing. Who else have we got? Uh, Dina, love the look of this mold. It's versatility. Oh, there you go. You read my mind, Dina. That's exactly what I was saying. Uh, Julie Hinge, Hingecliffe, Julie from New Zealand. Julie, I was raised in the Bay of Islands on an island called Motorua. Was it Motorua? No, it was Motorua, the island nearest the hole in the rock in the Bay of Islands. I spent about five years there as a child and I love your country. It's absolutely stunning and I need to come back there one day. Uh, yes, okay. Right. Um, make sure, guys, you keep keep interacting. I want to know who you are. And as I said, at this end of this demonstration, I'm going to ask you a question. I need you to respond to it just because I personally want to know the answer to the question. And I'll ask the question in a minute. So I've got here. Sorry, inside inside shot of my my box. Um, I've got here all the little elements I've painted up. I love the teddy bear. Remind me to do the teddy bear, will you, somebody? So I've got all the little elements, and I want to choose some of these to go onto this plaque. And I've got a bit of a game plan of how it all goes on. So let's put that to one side. Now, I, for um, this demonstration, am going to use um, a pin flare gel glue. You could use a hot glue gun, you could use a PVA, you could use something like an art glitter. I'm only using the pin flare gel glue because it's almost an instant grab. It will hold it in place while I turn it around for you, but over time it will become really solid as well. So let me pull that out and I need a bit of, there you go. I just need a bit of that to squirt some of this out onto. I'm going to use a toothpick or a cocktail stick to actually pick this up just because I've got big fat fingers and I want to make sure everything's sticking in the right place. So let's start to build. Um, 
I like the idea there's three buttons on this mold and I thought that'd be a really cute little element to add on to this. So I'm just going to, also same one twice Griffiths. There you go, that's the other one. So I'm just going to add those down the B and I thought that's, I just heard a voice and didn't know what it said. Okay, a little bit lower. See, I'm not alone. I am alone in the room, but I've got I've got my friend in my ear who keeps laughing at me and telling me funny jokes, which is a little distracting, but it's fine. No, that's our director. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to put the four buttons, sorry, three buttons down the side of the B. It's something I like to do. I think when you when you're someone that works in the crafting world, you tend to work in odd numbers. So when you group things, you tend to group in threes, fives, sevens. I think above seven and you sort of lose count anyway. So, but I do like to put things in threes. It's just the way my my brain sees things and I, I love it. So as you can see, even if you did that to that, that just gives you a real nice little decorative element. Now, I love the dress. This is from the washing line mold, which we'll be looking for later. Now, this is the washing line mold. We'll be looking at this in the next demonstration. And I love this. This is such a sweet little mold. And I can show you some really beautiful little display pieces of that. So I'm just going to bring in the dress again. All I'm doing to the side, guys, is I'm just putting a bit of the glue on the back of this. As I said, you can use a glue with a small applicator. I'm just using a toothpick because it's just easier for me to grab because I've got these big fat fingers. Now, in the center of this, I wanted to put a bear. Now, the bear is actually, I think it's called the heart bear. We use this one a lot on the show. I've got it on the website as well. So you'll see that because we'll do a bit of a website walkthrough in a moment or two. Well, after this day, we'll do a bit of a website walkthrough just so you know the whole process and what you will see if you click on certain elements. Um, a lot of you have already done it. I mean, I, I was surprised at how many of you went ahead and went, really love that. I don't know why I was surprised. It's gorgeous. But so many of you went ahead and did it anyway. And you've already purchased. And I'm loving that. OK, the little duck, which is one of my favorite all time elements. It's so sweet. Absolutely so sweet. Sorry, Kerry has an out of body moment with the duck. So let's put a little bit of glue on the back of there. So, so what I'm doing is I'm just absolutely just putting elements. You don't have to put everything from the mold onto um, the piece, but it's good to have options. So I'm just going to put the bottle of milk up there because I love where that goes. Now, let's see what else. I need, I need to put the pram on, but I want to put the bear. On. I love the bear. The bear is one of the sweetest little bears you can find. It comes as a flat one. But what I love is because the legs and the arms aren't attached to the body in other any other way than where the joint is, I can move it around. And it's such a sweet one. If you're someone who makes jewellery, this is the perfect one to make little air dry clay pieces from. And I'm absolutely loving that. So let's pop the bear down at the end there. Now, before I put the pram in pace, I just want to put a couple of shoes on. So I've got two shoes here now. I need to look at the buckles on the side, which tells me they're a left and a right shoe. So I'm going to put these. I'm going to have to stand this up a moment, guys. So forgive me if you're looking at the back of it. I just I can't do it. I can't do it any other way than this. So I just want to put these in place on the very end of the piece. I'll show you in a second. Don't worry. So keep the comments going. I can see we've got loads coming in. And once I've done this, we will spend a few seconds on comments. So there you go. I've just added the little boots on the end. Um, what else needs to go on the bottom? Um, I'm going to put some socks on there. The cutest little socks. The socks come from the washing line. Mold. So, so, I mean, seriously. And if I can get those out, anyone can get those out. So I just put those on because I think this little baby is going to be a teenager who just leaves their clothes dropped all over the place. Well, that's the way my brain is going anyway. So stick that one on there, that one on there. So I've just added those touches of little elements, as you can see. We'll do a bit of a close up and a scan over this when it's completely done. So it's coming back in. Now, when it comes to putting the push chair in, I wonder what color we'll do. Green, yellow. Ooh. Decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to go green. Right. Now, things to be aware of. It fits perfectly into this slot. 
okay so what I would do is make sure you use a glue that isn't instant because you want to be able to slide this round a little bit when you put the handle in um, because the handle would dictate where it goes on the mold itself um, on the MDF itself so let's just put a bit more glue on there now this glue will dry totally invisible it's not going to be seen and that's what I'm loving about this glue right let's just drop that into there now I'm not going to push it down until I put the handle on now the handle it's worth saying here sits neatly at the end there so a little bit of glue on the back of that I've got it all over my fingers that's kind of normal for me slot that in there so once the handle is in place I can then move the pram around so that's in the right place and then we'll go put some wheels on there now the wheels um, there's two wheels on there but the wheels are identical they've got this cute little flower detail in the middle so you can make that flower whatever color you want as to tie in with the theme of it so just slide that in there and don't forget guys this could be a Moses basket as well which is the other use I really like for this that's one wheel Let's take the other wheel. I need to put the lid on my glue. I've just noticed I haven't done that. Right, I think I've got everything on there. Let's move that out of the way. That was just my cheat sheet. Um, don't think I want to add anything more to that. I mean, sometimes less is truly more. So let's move that to one side so I've got that sticking. Let's move that down below. We might use that for something else later. So if I tip that up so you can see in the overhead, isn't that cute? I mean, that is seriously, seriously cute. I'm loving that. And that's such a cute little addition. And especially once you've got all of the backstory on there as well. I love that. So the thing I want to ask you, and I'm going to ask you the question now, and then I'm going to go to comments and then we'll probably go to VT or something. Just I want to explain the website is I want to know what style one you like the best so i've got four of them here so we're going to take a look at each one of them and then what i want you to do in the comments is put a b c or d because i want to know what you like because i know that we've had discussions here with the design team going what do you want do you want bright and bold do you want pastel do you want with molds without molds i want to know what you think so this is the one i'm going to show you in the close-up camera there you go so that is going to be number a okay so i'm going to put i'm going to put a letter on the on the front of it just so we know that that's a so let's move that out of the way because i'm going to need some room okay if you didn't want to use the mold you know, why wouldn't you want to use the mold if you wanted to go for something just simply stylish and bold and makes a statement this is going to be b okay so that's b b for blue there you go didn't think about that but it works for me um, this is another one and I've done this really bright bold color so I've got the wrong camera haven't I really bright bold colors loving that it's definitely a bit of a statement love that this is going to be number C so that's number C I'll put a C on it hopefully everyone can see the letters as I do it and then the very last one which is way up here which I went really really cutesy nursery so how sweet is that i went absolutely overboard with everything on that one and i like the clean dynamic punchy colors and this is d okay so that's a b c and d i would like to know which one you like so just put in the comments you don't have to do anything more than just a b c or d or if you like all four of them a b c and d so talking about comments move that out of the way let me just have a quick look down here and then we'll see if we can go to some sort of overhead um Nikki can't can't wait to receive the mold getting crafting can't beat KTC molds you're right you can't beat KTC molds they're absolutely fabulous they're designed and manufactured here in the UK to the highest standard they are actually food safe so as I keep saying you can use them for cookies and cakes and other edible embellishments they're good for dishwasher you can use them with melted sugar there's lots of uses you can use them for resins you can there's lots of lots of things you can do with KTC mold and I love the detail they have absolutely love the detail um, Letitia Jane Terry what have you got to say oh we have a ba baby granddaughter 
lovely and you're going to create a memory book i'm loving that idea that's as i'm a journaler so i love adding facts and things like this would be perfect on the cover and i don't know why for some reason last year and this year we seem to have a little bit of a baby boom happening i don't want to say the word lockdown but you never know what's going on guys there's lots of babies out there and we're loving it and that's probably one of the driving forces for us to come up with this unique little range um Jill, yes, it is a gorgeous little mold. I love it. Linda, yeah, another one of those. Hi from Sydney, Samantha. Samantha, hi. I lived in Sydney, Australia, in Elizabeth Bay for about four years. So, yes, I've been around. I know, I don't look it, but, you know, I've been around the block a bit. I've been around some places. Love Australia, love New Zealand. If I didn't live here, I'd either be there or Alaska. But where would you like to live? Or do you already live where you like to live? Um, Kath? great molds for cookies yes actually that's a really good point because if we look at the size of this mold everything on here including the push chair would fit onto a generic round cookie so great little elements so if you are doing a baby shower maybe one cookie has got a pair of feet on one cookie's got little booties one's got a duck one's got a pacifier one's got a bottle great way to use this so i think i want to Let's go to a VT because I actually want to show you the way around the website and then I want to show you some of the samples behind me before we go into the next one. So let's go to a VT, shall we? So um, if you head over to our website, which is www.k2suedesigns.com, you'll see the Handmade for Baby on the home page. Click through. You'll find all of the products I've mentioned in today's show. If you, you can keep watching, you keep watching while the browser is open. Um, this is the kit. This kit is the one I've actually been talking and using in my demonstrations. Just pop it in your basket, you're ready to go. But don't forget, guys, there are loads and loads and loads of other items in within the baby theme on the website as well. So make sure you check that out. And there are a whole load of papers on there as well. We haven't forgot our card makers. We haven't forgot our scrapbook. But, uh, scrapbookers either so I'm going to take a quick flick through of some of those in a moment anyway so here we go right I am possibly the worst person at doing doing the whole flicky fanny thing so and by that I mean packs so let's see if I can do this so this is this I believe is adventures in air balloons and there's some lovely ones they come in a5 they do come in a4 as well so this is let's get this on the right place so this is the a4 sorry as i said i'm absolutely horrible at doing this i need to go back to present a training school i think but there's some really nice background pieces in here as well as decorative elements so if you are someone who wants to put together cards that's fine we have um, a baby blue and a baby pink so this is the a5 cards if i get that so you can see the light now i've actually stolen a couple out of here already so it's not a complete pack but if you look on the website you will see it all there was another another couple and we have the big ones so if you wanted to do maybe a wall hanging in a frame this would be a great background to put maybe the pictures of the baby maybe make it so it's every six months and you put six pictures on there um great lovely little stuff and also with things like this obviously you can cut these strips out they're perfect for a card front perfect for a scrapbook page perfect for journaling as i said we do have the pink version as well for the baby girl if you have twins obviously you have to have one of each so and there are twins on this guys as you can see it does say twins we're not ignoring you um again a lovely selection of papers and then we have this one i can't remember what this one's called someone have to scream or put it in the thing um i have to lift these up i can't flick these these sort of rainbows and clouds so if you're doing a scrapbook these are perfect for actually using with a background. You can cut into them, cut around them. You could even make them into card bases. Um, I want to say it's rainbows and someone will tell me in my little ear in a moment. Yay, Laura's under pressure, people. <laughs> say that again. Sweet pastel weather rainbows. There you go. Yeah, and we've even got we've even got the rainbows on there there so as you can see we've got lots on offer whether you're a card maker a cake maker a crafter we've got your stuff so right um i actually just want to do a little visit to the comments where do, 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 do. julia 
but if I need to pick A, okay, you like them all, but you want to pick A. We've got an A and a D, can't decide between them. What's A and D? Okay, I know what those are. Uh, received them all last week, already started using the white clay. It complements the washing line perfectly. And the little girl, got, yes, it does. I mean, as we've said, we have, can we pop to the overhead a second? We have baby accessories here, but we also have washing line as well. And they're just stunning little molds. There's so much detail. We'll be doing that in the next demonstration. So let me pull a couple of the display pieces from behind me because I really do want to show off what we've got out there. So let me just pull something through. Okay, this is the washing line we've been talking about. So as you can see, you get all these elements. All It's just a cute idea. And I absolutely love those. And again, those fit perfectly onto the front of a card. I mean, I've done, where have I done? Okay, this is a card actually using that dress. So as you can see, they fit perfectly into the mini aperture cards, which are on the show as well. Uh, let's pull in another couple. Now, if you are someone who does like mixed media type stuff, this is someone who's made like a pencil pot. I would say that's probably out of a small round tin of crisps or fries, which you want to call them. Um, again, a nice little pencil holder. Could be just an element in the, in the baby's nursery. Loving that mixed media look to things. You can actually use, we've got a cloud shaped MDF on the on the show and we've got the stitch letters lots of different things it's just beautiful stuff guys it's one of those molds i think that you can do almost anything with as long as it's within a baby theme obviously and you can make it as light as dark as colorful as whatever you wish so i just want to come in now there are a few few elements that i never got to in my first demonstration and here i want to go for it. okay i have to look at the bear where is the bear um now, as I got a bit addicted with the bear, as you can see, um, the bear comes out. I mean, I've done him in brown. I've done him in blue. I've done him in purple. I've, oh, I was not painted, but there you go. He's just a really sweet, cute bear. If you're someone who wants to make little brooches or something, you could quite easily make that a resin or out of an oven baked clay. And it would be a hard surface. You could then paint it and mount it onto a brooch or a pin. It's just a really cute thing. Even if you've got a little one who wants a little hair tie or something. So I've just put the white, uh, white vegetable fat in there, pressing down into the mold. I think this is one of these molds that everyone needs to buy. I mean, it's just, it puts cute into cute. It's just super sweet. So I've just move that up the other way. Now, remember guys, we are live. I do want comments and I want to remind you now, because I'm going to remind you later anyway, we already know when the date of the next show is. The next show, it could be two shows, it's going to be April the 7th. Um, as soon as this show is finished, we'll put out a link, you'll see some sneak peeks. So let me just, isn't he so cute? Let's see if I can hold him to that camera. Oh, I've got to stretch a long way to see that one. But I love him. Anyway, you, that means you won't mess in the updates. If you um, have missed this and you're just catching the end of it, you can go to the KTC website, which is www.ktcdesigns.com. Go to the blog and you'll see KTC TV and you can catch up on all of my misadventures over the last few KTC TVs. But it'll introduce you to the products and they'll always be there and the links will always work. Loving that. Also, KTC does have a YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel is where you can see the video for modifying the cake, cake fondant the modeling paste, which I actually said on there. So, so right, here we go. Let's, let's pull out. And we've showed you the dress finished. Let's show you how easy the dress is to do. So again, a little bit of white vegetable fat. I'm just taking a little bit of clay. Now, if you get too much clay, you can just take it all out of the mold and actually just roll it into a ball and start again. If you've got too little clay, you can obviously go in and actually just add a little bit more to the back of the molded piece. They are so easy to use, literally. Bang, it's done. If I tilt it up, you see all of that detail in there? Um, and the same goes for everything on the... Um, the new launch too so let's go okay i know we don't have yellow feet but we're gonna have a yellow foot okay so i'm just gonna come in i'm gonna push the clay down i would like to say just use the flat of your thumb to rub over the top don't use any sharp objects guys if you use something sharp on the silicone mold and damage it you've damaged the mold forever so come in flex it pop it out there's a little tiny foot 
absolutely lovely. Let's see what else on here you could want to do. OK, um, I'm probably going to have someone say that you won't be able to get the safety pin out because it's such a small little mold. Rub a little bit white vegetable fat in there. And I'm just going to take a little bit of a pinch of clay. That's probably way too much of clay. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to press down and actually press clay in there. And because there's white vegetable fat, you're going to find that the clay will slide. So once you've done that, give it a bit of a clean up. Now, before I demold this, let's put this out there. Anytime you demold anything that's thin or filigree shaped, it's likely to distort when you take it out. You just move it back into its original shape once you've got it out of the mold. So I come around and I give this a really good flex, get the air under it, flex the mold backwards. I just catch it with my finger and there you go. I've got the safety pin. It didn't distort that much, guys. So and then I would just put this on a bit of sponge, a bit of kitchen towel, a bit of kitchen paper just to be able to dry out. And they dry out how quickly? OK, that safety pin, probably 20 minutes, that's dry. Depending on the humidity in the area you live and where you live, that determines a lot. I usually make my air dry pieces and I leave them overnight and then I put them in a box. And once they're in a box, I've got them all done. OK, just just as an example, this this is me just making so that I've got stuff to pull on. I just sit down and I put a movie on or I'll put my favorite YouTube channel on and I'll just make them and then I've got them for future projects and then they're not going to go off. They don't take up that much space. and I've got them for the future. So what else have I got on this one? I think I've done all. I mean, the buttons and the wheels are obviously an easy do for you. We've got the pacifier. So let's look at another one of the ones on here because I really like this one. So um, let's look at the baby grow because we haven't done a baby grow yet. So let's go in here. So baby grow, obviously male or female at that age. I don't think the baby really gives a hoot. So and then I want to go and look at some other comments because I'm still interested to find out who who actually loves what. And I think Laura, can you because I know Laura can hear me. She's out there. Uh, Laura, can you start letting doing a bit of a count and find out which of our designs was the most popular? Um, a and OK, right. I did hear that. Fine. I will have a look in a moment. So give this a bit of a flex. Out it pops and look, look at the amount of detail you've got in all of those little buttons. Everything has come out perfect, even the folds in the um, in the baby grow in the fabric. Loving that. So let's put that to one side. I do want to just answer a couple more comments. Then I want to pull in a couple of the designs. Then I'll tell you the results of which we thought was the best. Well, the most preferred because they're all good. So Denise. Uh, Oh, I did, Denise, sorry. Linda Power, uh, from a midwife watching today, we certainly do have a baby boom. Would love this with a personalized name. Great presentation. You know what? That's a very good point. How do I personalize it? Well, if you look on the website, we've already had a look. There are actually two alphabet molds on the website. Um, we have a small domed letters and numbers. And I had a board for those. So there you go. So that's they all come out like this. So you could very easily the scale of this would fit perfectly on one of the panels. And then you've got the stitched letters. Where have I put the stitched letters? I had a whole box of stitched letters somewhere. People have lost them. Oh, there they are. There you go. So as you can see, I make up loads of them, but you could just make up whatever you need. These can be painted up. So yes, you could come in and you could put a word on something. Actually, we've got time. Let's see if I can put something on something. So let's, okay, right, we'll go to this. Um, let's see what name I'm going to make. Uh, oh, I put myself on the spot now, haven't I? I've now got to find, I've got to find a name that I can spell with the letters that I've got. Okay, I've got a P. Let's see, actually, let's see if I can. You know, this is when Kerry does live, when he actually should have thought of this before he said he'd do it. So, but I mean, as as I was asked, why don't we? <laughs> I'm having a moment, people. It's it's like I can hear people going, do this, do that, do this. Uh, 
It's like Scrabble, but not having all the pieces. Uh, right, let's see if I can find a Y. Oh, there you go. I'll do Toby. There you go. We've got a little boy. It, this is a big family, so there's boy and girl clothes on the line. Right, let's pull in. I'm going to use a little bit of art glitter glue purely because the applicator on this is so small. So let's let's put the O. Um, so again, this could ooh, not be not be that. Um, this could be your PVA glue. It could be whatever glue you like it to be. So I sit that in the middle of there. So yes, um, who was it said? I can't remember. I can't remember who it was. So yes, Linda. Um, yes, you can personalise them as we are showing here. Toby, short for Tobias, I believe. So, do you have a Toby in your family? I don't have a Toby in my family. I must admit. So it's just as it, I mean, this could be saying Toby's room. Don't ask me to find R W O M. I'm never going to find it in this box. So, and stick that in place. So there you go. Yes, I could quite easily, Linda, personalize something just by putting that in. And then that could, if I'd have put Toby's room on it, that would have been a great way to tie that in. But just great elements. So yes, we do have alphabets on the show. And that was why we put them there. So right, let's move that to one side again. So let's have a see what else anyone else has said. Uh, Linda, uh, Jill, Kerry is white clay food safe for embellishing on cakes. OK, um, very good question. The hearty air drying clay, although it's not toxic, um, we wouldn't recommend that you use it on an edible item. A uh, few reasons. One, it could be a choke hazard. Number two, we cannot guarantee that it's manufactured in a food safe environment. So no, I wouldn't use it as an embellishment on a cake or an edible item. I would make the embellishment out of a food grade product to start with. Um, just that way. If, if, however, say you had a birthday cake and you wanted to make clay elements, you could attach them to a plaque and the plaque could be sat on top of the cake so it's a removable item. But yeah, I wouldn't personally put um, a non-food item onto a food item. There are exceptions, however, if you're making um, things like floral arrangements and you're making them with sugar and you want to make them out of clay, you could make a floral arrangement for a wedding cake, say, as long as the clay isn't directly in contact with the cake itself. So maybe you'd have it cascading down the side of the cake. The end of the flowers would be in a food pick. That sort of thing is acceptable. Um, sticking clay directly to a cake, in my opinion, as a chef, definitely is not. But anyway, everyone to their own thing. Just know that we wouldn't recommend using it directly on there because sticking sticking clay on the top of a cupcake is probably not the best thing to do. But very good question. And thank you for asking. I wouldn't have thought to think of bringing that up. Uh, well, well, let's see what. Grateful. Yes, you can. Um, using cocoa butter to paint on top of molded pieces in sugar, a great way to bring in that textural element. Yes, thank you very much for that one, Meg. Uh, yes, um, very good one. Sandra, Sandra, I think what you're hinting at is it's a great way to mix all different mediums together in that with the same molds, as in molded elements, you could make the invitations for a party. You could do a place setting for a party. You could do a napkin ring with a feature on it. But then you could use the same um, the same style onto an edible medium as well. So, yes, you can tie everything together because of the versatility of the mold. However, what I would say, as I said at the beginning of the show, is we have edible and non-edible. We recommend two separate molds. But once you've got the elements, they can look identical. You've got some for cake. You've got some for craft. You've got table decorations. You've got home decor pieces. It's just versatile, guys. Absolutely versatile. Thank you for that one, Sandra. Carol. Show us how to make the bear sit. You just pointed it and shout. <laughs> joking, absolutely joking. Actually, that's a really good point. Okay, let's bring in my favourite bear. Do you know I love this bear? I don't. I, 
I don't know what it is. Sometimes a mole just speaks to you, and I just love this little bear. Not that I'm hearing the bear speak, but you know what I mean. Okay, so let's put a little bit of white vegetable fat in there. Take a little bit of my clay. I've probably got too much clay here, but we know I can just clean it off. I tend to push down quite firmly into the face because of his muzzle. So he's got quite a deep face cavity. I then press the clay all in on itself. Let's tidy up the edge. Obviously, I'm speed deming here, guys. You will be doing this a lot slower than I'm doing. So once I've got him in the mold, I, as with every mold I use, I open up the edges to pull the edges away. And that sort of starts letting the air come through. I then flex the mold and I can just gently encourage him to come out. Now, if I want him sitting, what I like to do is I just like to pull the arms up a bit so that his pads are almost facing upwards. And then I literally just tuck his little feet up and then I would sit him against something, maybe, well, there you go, maybe, maybe the lid of something, just so that as he's drying, he's in a sitting position. It could be as easy as just getting a piece of card because they're really lightweight and actually just sitting him up against a bit of card or something. So that's how I make him sit. Also, don't forget, guys, you can make him run. You could put him with his legs running. You can do lots of different stuff. You can have him holding stuff. That's what I like about the limbs being separate from the body except where the joints are because I can manipulate this bear to do lots of different things. So that's how I make him sit. Uh, da, da, da. Rebecca, when you say vegetable fat, would you say something like treks? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think in this country we would use white treks. Um, I know in Europe and in America, I've used Crisco. I'm not familiar with the products in other parts of the world, but I would say always use a white vegetable fat. Don't use an animal fat because it's likely to go rancid at some point. I have heard of people using things that are like a coconut fat and stuff like that. I've not personally used them, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. A lot of the time you can just dust it with air. Um, cornstarch or corn flour and tap it out. I know some people have actually used talcum powder before now and dusted the mold and that's purely for clay, not for cake guys, um, and tapping it out. So I'm sorry, Laura, didn't catch that. You have, oh wow, who is it? Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna actually lie to the public here. <laughs> okay, I'll get to that in a second. Um, sorry, I'm hearing voices and they're not dead people, it's Laura. Um, I've got this washing line mold, it's fabulous for baby shower cupcakes. It is fabulous because once again, um, the sizes of the molded pieces fit perfectly on cookies and perfectly on cupcakes. I love that, I love the way that it's been designed in such a way that we haven't lost the realism but we've kept the scale. Uh, all the way down there. Okay, I think if we nip over and do one more VT, um, and then I will actually take it from there and tell you the winner. So I think I want to look at some of the cake stuff. Now, I keep saying about cake, and I think that's probably because I'm a baker and a confectioner and a chef. So I always think of cake and I think of craft, but I want to make sure that when you watch the Katie Sue Designs TV, that you actually know that we're not just talking about paper craft, and we are talking about cake as well. And there's been some lovely stuff done, and these are just such beautiful, tiny little elements that can be added to edible mediums, and loving, loving, loving that. So let's see, who have I got? Um... What did Leticia say? Thank you, Kerry and the team, for an amazing show. Looking forward to the next one in April. Yes, don't forget, um, it's April the 7th is the next one. We are going to be doing a show at 10.30. I'm battling with Alison at the moment because we think we want to put a second show in in the afternoon. So make sure you follow and like the Facebook show, um, the Facebook pages, because that way, you will get notifications and if you click going or interested, you'll get sneaky peeks ahead of time. You'll also get all the information on the next shows once it's decided. Also myself on um, on Facebook, I very often share stuff and once a week I try to send out a teaser or what the team will let me show you anyway. So I just want to give you a little bit of an update. Okay, you guys voted. I don't agree with you, but you voted. Okay. You have decided the one that I demonstrated, number A, was your favourite. I can understand. It's cute. It's baby. I like bold and bright colours. Everyone else is different to that. 
and I absolutely love it. So let's have a little one look. There you go. This is the one I did in the show. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely pastels. Love it. Will fit in any setting, as would any of these guys. It was just for fun, the competition, but it was just nice to hear what you guys were actually thinking. So, okay, let me just, let me just move all this out of the way. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, a um, couple of things to remember. Keep the comments coming in even after the show because we will have customer service people. If you have cus uh, questions, we will answer your questions for you because we will support you wholly in that. Um, don't forget to like or follow Katie Sue's Facebook pages. That way you'll know when we're coming out next. Uh, if you do go to the website to buy the baby accessories mold, have a bit of a look around on that same page. There's some really clever stuff there, guys. There's things we haven't even touched on, like we've got a moon and a cloud, and we've got MDF in other shapes as well. Great things to do. You will need to actually throw some clay in your basket if you're using this clay. If not, then you're fine and you're good to go. Um, April 7th is the next one that's going out there. I think I think it actually just leaves me to say thank you and goodbye, actually. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in April. Uh, we've got some really cute things coming along. We've got another launch, I believe. Um, some cute stuff. We'll, we'll try and incorporate cake and craft again in the same sort of launches. From me, um, big thank you to the design team. I can't do it without you guys. It, you just... You blow me and Mary every single time you do stuff, and I love that. Thank you for your support. It was lovely to see you. Fabulous for all the comments. Please keep the comments coming in all of the shows. It really does make me feel less alone in this room with a camera pointed at me. So until next time, guys, thank you from KTC TV team, and thank you from me. Bye-bye now.